Welcome back to Simplifying Synthesis. In this video, we are going to look at the total synthesis of Scabroloid B. This work was published in JAX by the Firstner Group. In their paper, Total Synthesis of Neurocambrolide Scabroloid B and its Transformation into Senesculide C in Eleganolide and Horiolide. Scabroloid B was first discovered in 2002 by Xu et al. from the Taiwanese soft coral Sinularia scabra. We have actually discussed this molecule before on this channel, back in 2022, when the first group published their synthesis of scabrolide A and the proposed structure of scabrolide B. This synthesis proved that the putative 7655 ring structure was incorrect and needed to be revised. The group initially used computational methods to propose a structure for scabrolide B and began their synthesis to test this hypothesis. In 2023, however, an X-ray crystal structure was published, unambiguously proving the structure of this molecule. Interestingly, this molecule was actually independently reported a second time in 2022. However, it was reported under the name Sinisculide D. While Scabrolide A, which they previously synthesized, has a 7655 ring structure, Scabrolide B has a 6755 ring structure, meaning that they would need to completely redesign their synthetic strategy. In particular, synthesizing the central seven-membered ring is a significant challenge, complicated by the fact that it is part of a network of six contiguous stereo centers. The strategy that they devised would use a mokoyama aldol addition together with an enolate alkenylation to construct the central seven-membered ring. To synthesize the molecule with the correct stereochemistry, they would use starting materials drawn from the chiral pool and also a Hayashi addition using a chiral catalyst. So let's start the synthesis with this Hayashi addition. To begin their synthesis, they first needed to make R nor carvone. The published method for this takes seven steps and is rather inefficient, so they devised a new three step strategy, starting with a Hayashi addition. This reaction is an asymmetric rhodium catalyzed 1 4 addition using an isopropenyl boronate to stereoselectively install the allyl group at the 3 position. In addition to the boronate and rhodium catalyst, it also utilizes a chiral ligand, an amine base, neopentylglycol, and a solvent mix of hexanes, methanol, and water, all of which are essential. The solvent mixture is required to drive the formation of the neopentyl boronate from the pinnacle boronate starting material. This is required as the pinnacle boronate undergoes transmetallation quite slowly. This solvent mixture sets up an equilibrium between the pinnacle boronate, the boronic acid, which has a low solubility in hexane, a dimethyl boronate, which is only present in low concentrations, and the desired neopentyl boronate, which is highly soluble, present in a high concentration, and reacts rapidly in a transmetallation. The rhodium species is generated from cyclooctadiene rhodium chloride dimer. This reacts with a chiral ligand based upon the segfos motif, which displaces the labile cod ligand. It is this species that then reacts with the neopentyl boronate, forming a rhodium allyl complex. This adds the allyl group in a conjugate fashion to cyclohexene, forming a rhodium coordinated enolate species. This is then hydrolyzed by water to form the target product, while diisopropyl ethylamine deprotonates another equivalent of water. This allows for the formation of a hydroxyl bridge dirhodium species, which continues the catalytic cycle. The stereo control of this reaction arises from the conformation of the segfos ligand around the rhodium allyl complex. Studies on a similar species have shown that there is a vacant cavity in these complexes, which allows the cyclohexadiene to preferentially add from one phase. The rhodium first forms a pi complex, and this then intramolecularly delivers the allyl group in a stereoselective manner to generate the target product with a 94% EE. With this product in hand, they then silated it using lithium tetramethylpipyridine and TMS chloride. Lithium TMP is quite a bulky base and preferentially deprotonates the molecule on the less sterically hindered side. The resulting enolate then reacts with TMS chloride, forming the silyl enol ether with a 5 to 1 regiomeric ratio. This then took part in a Sagusa Ito oxidation. It was reacted with a palladium DBA complex, which first coordinates to the pi bond and then forms an enolate complex upon the elimination of the TMS group. 
A beta hydride elimination then occurs, forming iron or carvone with a 56% yield over two steps. Allyl carbonate was also present in the reaction and is used as a terminal oxidant to regenerate the palladium zero catalyst from the palladium hydride species. With this norcarvone species now complete, they then synthesized the other partner required for the Mokiyama Michael addition. To do this, they utilized an intermediate from the previous synthesis of scabrolite A, which was synthesized from R. linalool. This was deprotected using HF and pyridine, and then the hydroxyl group was reprotected using TMS triflate. This was taken forward to an ozonolysis reaction. The ozone undergoes a 3 plus 2 cycloaddition with the alkene, which then undergoes a cycloreversion and then recombines to form an ozonide. This is then reduced with triphenylphosphine to form an aldehyde. In the next step, the aldehyde took part in a stork chow olefination. Methyl triphenylphosphonium iodide is first deprotonated by sodium HMDS, forming an inlet. This adds to the aldehyde in a mechanism similar to a Wittig reaction, forming a four-membered oxophosphatane ring. This ring collapses to eliminate triphenylphosphine oxide and form the target iodoalkene with a Z configuration with a 69% yield over two steps. The low temperature and the choice of base are essential for selectivity in this reaction, as changes to these conditions also allow for the E alkene to form. With this iodoalkene at hand, it could then take part in the critical Mukayam Michael addition. The lactone is deprotonated by TMP, forming an enolate that is silated with TIPS triflate. Meanwhile, fragment 1 is activated by coordination to lanthanum triflate, making it more electrophilic and allowing it to be attacked by the silyl enol ether. This stereoselectively attacks into the less sterically hindered side of the alkene. The TIPS group migrates to the norcarvone moiety during this reaction, and it was selectively deprotected in the presence of the TMS group using TBAF at minus 78 degrees to produce the target compound with a 70% yield over two steps. This compound could be crystallized and the X-ray crystal structure confirmed the stereochemistry. Taking this forward, it was then subject to an enolate alkenylation. The position alpha to the ketone is first deprotonated by a solution of potassium tert-butoxide and diisopropylphenol. Palladium then undergoes an oxidative addition into the carbon iodine bond where it then reacts intramolecularly with the enolate. A reductive elimination then occurs to regenerate palladium zero and yield to the target seven-membered ring. In addition to this product, they also formed a dimer in a 29% yield. This is formed by the reaction of palladium allyl species derived from the product with the iodinated starting material. The phenoxide is essential to the success of this reaction, however its role is not fully understood. It is worth noting that studies into enolate alkenylations have shown evidence for both carbon-bonded and oxygen-bonded palladium intermediates. However, in my scheme, I have shown the carbon-bonded intermediate, as I think this is more likely in this system, due to the more favourable size of the ring. Buchwald's group has looked at the effect of phenoxide in this reaction, and their studies assume an oxygen-coordinated palladium complex. While they could not conclusively prove the role that the phenoxide is playing in this reaction, they do suggest several hypotheses. The simplest is that palladium first coordinates to the carbonyl, and the phenoxide serves as the base to generate the enolate. The pathway which they think is most likely, however, is that the phenoxide acts as a ligand to stabilise an otherwise unstable palladium intermediate and allow the reaction to proceed. They support this hypothesis by noting that increasing the steric bulk on the phenoxide decreases the reactivity, indicating that it is close to the reacting centre during the rate determining step. So moving forward with the synthesis, the next step was to oxidise the alpha position. The gamma position is first deprotonated by DBU, generating an enolate. This then attacks molecular oxygen, forming a peroxide intermediate. This is then reduced by a reaction with trimethylphosphite to produce an alcohol with a 39% yield over two steps. This alcohol then took part in an allylic alcohol transposition. It reacts with methyl trioxorenium, which then undergoes an intermolecular rearrangement, attacking the double bond, causing it to migrate and eliminating the rhenium coordinated oxygen. This complex is then hydrolyzed to form the allylic alcohol in a 52% yield, together with the loss of the TMS group. It was essential to the success of this reaction that it was carried out under an aerobic atmosphere. 
Interestingly, they also observed overoxidation, forming an enone. Incidentally, this unintended byproduct was the final target, scabrolite B, which was formed in a 7% yield. To completely oxidize the allylic alcohol, they reacted it with manganese dioxide. This is attacked by the alcohol, and the resulting intermediate can intramolecularly abstract a hydrogen atom, forming a manganese 3 intermediate that is further reduced to produce the target scabrolite B in a 51% yield. Its structure was conclusively proven using X ray crystallography. To transform this molecule into senesculite C, they carried out a dehydration reaction using the Burgess reagent. This molecule is witrionic and is attacked by the hydroxyl group, eliminating triethyl ammonia. This triggers the elimination of the oxygen group, forming the desired double bond in a 74% yield. The researchers found that they could also transform scabrolite B into inalic analyte by reacting it with triethylamine in a mixture of acetonitrile and methanol at 60 degrees for 22 hours. This first epimerizes the position after the lactone and promotes an intramolecular oxymichael addition into the enone system, forming an ether. Reprotonation of the resulting enolate generated in eleganolide in a 20% yield. This molecule has been quite an interesting target in the field of total synthesis, and I have covered the total synthesis on this channel before. Finally, they discovered that they could also transform this molecule into horiolide. This was done by reacting scabrolide B in a solution of triethylamine in acetonitrile and methanol at 60 degrees, however this time for 44 hours. This first forms in eleganolide, as we saw earlier, and then proceeds through a retro-oxymichael aldol addition, where an enolate is formed and the ether linkage is broken, generating an alkoxide intermediate. This alkoxide then undergoes a retro addition, breaking the five-membered ring and eliminating a ketone, while forming an enolate intermediate that is then reprotonated. The alpha position of this ketone is then deprotonated, and the resulting enolate then undergoes an intermolecular Michael addition, forming a new carbon-carbon bond and producing horiolide in a 10% yield. With that synthesis complete, we come to the end of this video. Join me in the next one, where I will be looking at the total synthesis of Cordycicidin D.